G'day. G'day. Yeah, mate, how are you? Been busy? Flat out? Nah, not busy. What about you? Busy? Busy. Good, we got one. Who else is busy? Anyone busy? All busy. I'm flat out. Can't keep up, actually. I mean, it's a good problem to have, don't get me wrong. It's uh, better than the alternative, but I'm flat out. I can't scratch. I haven't got time to scratch. Being busy in 2015 is something we hear about a lot, and we talk about it a lot with one another. It's something we wish for one another. Being busy, good on you. It's something we want people to know about ourselves. We use it sort of as a measure of success and a little bit like a social validation. You're busy. I'm busy too. You're bu bu we're busy. We're busy people. But why do we do that? <clears throat> I mean, busy, being busy is a problem for most people. Busy, flat out, it's killing me. Why do we talk about being busy that way? Why do you reckon? Busy's a problem. How many times have you lamented the things that you could be doing, should be doing, would have done, could have achieved if only you weren't so bloody busy? And how stressed out are you because you're so busy? You people need a holiday, but you're too busy to take a holiday. In researching this and I'll tell you about, a little bit about that later. But in researching this, I was sort of looking at surveys taken on the internet. And the internet tells me that 40% of people surveyed in Britain last year said they were too busy to take a holiday. Other ones say they're too busy to take, buy insurance or uh, get their driver's licence or eat breakfast or vote. <laughs> too busy to vote. Too busy to take part in deciding your nation's future. That's how busy people are. 30% of American Christians surveyed in one of these studies said they were too busy to properly develop a relationship with God. <laughs> the Christians are busy. These are people trying to get into heaven. And that's how busy they are. Now, the National Time Usage surveys back this up. We're sleeping less, we're working harder, and we've got longer, uh, less time for recreation. That's what they say. But, I've got no notes, but I'll tell you, I didn't need to tell you a bit of a story. Um, actually, maybe it's not a problem. Maybe being busy isn't a problem. I don't think it's such a problem. I've got this idea that we're not busy enough and that by making our busy lives even busier, we can be even happier. And I'm going to share with you today a bit of a, one simple trick that I think helped me do that and maybe I can pass on to you. Oh, yeah, I've got slides. <laughs> um, okay, uh, that's my idea. Humans actually want to be busy. Did you know that? Experiments have shown that given the choice between being busy and being idle, humans will choose being busy given any reason at all. Another, uh, another uh, study at the uh, University uh, of Maryland in the US in 2012 showed that the happiest people around are the people who have little or no time to themselves but rarely feel rushed. That study thinks that they're 25% happier than the average person and that study thinks that the busier we are, the happier we are, so long as we feel like we've got it all under control. Okay, so now, how do I make this go? There. Ah, oh, there you are. This is me, right? Now, I, this is where I tell my story. I'm, a, I'm not even in your program because I, got, I found out I was going to do this seven days ago and because a colleague pulled out of it. And in seven days, I, I read the TED stuff and it says you need to be an expert. And so I thought, oh, well, I'm not an expert on anything. I'll do a talk, a talk. In seven days, I can come up with something that I'm an expert on and it's me. Okay? So that's what you get. You get me. <laughs> so this is me. Actually, it's not even me. That is my head photoshopped onto the body of a person who owns a suit <laughs> and a black tie. Seriously, that's not even my body. <laughs> but I reckon I'm pretty busy. <laughs> um, I reckon I'm pretty busy. My wife and I, Rachel, uh, my wife Rachel and I have four children between the ages of eight and 14. And we reckon we know what busy means. We both work full time, minimum of 50 hours a week. Now, my job since 2003 has been to manage 
projects and programs of work for software companies. I've done that on big projects, small, small projects. And over the years, I've been managing, directing and coordinating the activities of hundreds of people, delivering and costing millions of dollars. It's my job at scale to be on top of things, to be organised and to have it all under control. And let me tell you, Rachel thinks that is hilarious because she won't let me organise the weekend. She's always done the shopping, running, uh, tell me when the kids need to be here, she does the banking, all that. So she thinks I'm hopeless, very, very disorganised. And of course she's right. Of course she is. My wife is right. She'll be watching this. <laughs> so... Early on in my, early on in my uh, professional career, when I took on this job of, of managing that work and those people, I felt very stressed out. I felt I was running on the spot. I was never getting anywhere. I was running flat out and I was very, very busy, but I was always stressed out and I was really worried about being busy. So I thought, well, I'd better work out a few tactics for this and I went back to school, studied project management, I studied business management. Anything I could do to help organise my time better and the, people, and the time of the people that I was working with. And it got a bit better. And then I found agile software development and the techniques and I, uh, of um, uh, agile uh, software delivery. And I loved it. I read everything I could. Everything I could about teamwork. Everything I could about uh, motivation. Everything I could about the elimination of activity waste. And I got even better. I got a few qualifications. I got a few, uh, a bit of something resembling a career together. And after a while, I could uh, sneer at my wife from behind my certificates whenever she suggested that I was disorganised, a hobby that I still enjoy today. It did get better. It did get better at work. And I suddenly felt I was on top of things. I was organised and I was, you know, I was kicking a few goals career-wise and, and getting places because of that. But I still feel stressed out at home. I felt like I had a lot of things I wanted to do and couldn't do. And I felt busy, like I was running everywhere all of the time and I was stressed out and I, was, I thought I was so busy. I didn't want to apply those same structured project management things that I'd learned and applied in my working life to my home life. I wanted to think I was a little bit more free-spirited than that. So I had to learn different ways. Tried yoga, lasted about five minutes, can you imagine? <laughs> Tried that, I became a boring and uh, a very energetic devotee of the getting things done personal productivity system, uh, David Allen, trademark. Uh, and it got a little bit better, it, it did, but it still wasn't enough. The one thing, the one thing that made me more happy and more busy than anything I'd ever done. Now remember, I wanted to do some things. I wanted to exercise, I wanted to blog, I wanted to learn how to weld, I wanted to do a lot of things and I wasn't getting to any of that stuff. The one thing, the one trick, the one thing that I did to make me busier and happier than anything else, I turned the telly off. That's all I did. I did nothing else in my personal life other than turn the telly off to turn that part of my life around. Another slide. This is the National Time Usage Survey that I um, mentioned earlier. This is the Australian one, and uh, it looks a bit buggered because we transferred it from the Apple to the um, <laughs> PowerPoint. <laughs> uh, but let's, I'll tell you what these things are. Necessary time is, this is the, when do they take the survey, they ask everyone in the survey, this is the Australian Bureau of Statistics, they say to everyone who they ask, what do you do with your time? And they class it, and this is how they class it. And so that your necessary time is your time sleeping, going to the toilet, washing yourself, doing the things that, it take, that you have to do to be a, to, a, a human being in 2015. Can't get out of that stuff. Contracted time is the stuff where you're at work. That's 70% uh, of your time on average. Committed time is starting it to your time, but it's stuff you get to choose how to do, but not necessarily that you're going to do it. So it's shopping for the groceries, cleaning the house, maybe some volunteer work. You get to choose how to do that stuff and how much time it takes you and how committed you are to it, but you, you're committed to doing it. Now, the free time, the free time is what I want to talk about today. That wedge of 22%. It's actually quite a bit of time. A little bit over four hours per person on average in Australia per day spread out over a week. You can do anything you want with that time. Anything that really fills you up in here, anything at all. Spend time with your children, spend time with your wife or your husband or, if, or your partner, 
you can learn the banjo, you can learn your grandmother's native language, you can take ballet, any, anything you want to do, that's your time. You can do whatever you like with that. And the great thing is we know what people do with that because the survey asks the question, what do you do with your spare time? And the winner in 2006, when this uh, survey was taken, occupying more than 50% of all of our recreational time, regardless of labour status, regardless of gender, is watching TV, watching TV. It's a lot of time, more than half your time. Now, what do you think is going to happen? So, this is another thing that the 2006 survey told us. That between, 2000, between 1997 and 2006, the time between the two, the two surveys in Australia, we lost 15 minutes on average of recreational time between that survey and the next one. What do you think is going to happen to that wedge by 2019 when we do the next, uh, the next survey? We're just going to get bigger or smaller? We're going to have more or less? What do we reckon? I reckon less. And we don't know, but I'll tell you something. Last year in the US, their national time usage survey showed that, that American people have less recreation time. So I reckon it's probably going to happen. So we don't know, but I'll admit that. We don't know. I've been on this seven days. My, my research is flimsy. <laughs> we don't know, but I'll tell you something we do know. Nielsen have something they call the multi-screen survey. They do it every quarter. The one that they did in the last quarter of last year, delivered in December, shows that in 2015, this year, that's this year, our screen usage, our time watching television, now using the mobile phone, using the tablet, using the computer and the traditional TV, has risen from a little over on average two hours per day to more than three hours per day on average per person, three hours and six minutes. I'm not talking about time on Facebook, answering your emails and doing whatever other crap you like to do on your computer or your email or your, your tablet. I'm talking about watching video on your devices. And believe me, the irony of delivering this message via a TED video is not lost on me. <laughs> but we watch more than three hours on average of video on devices, all those devices per day, per person across Australia right now. And this is the time we think here in this room that our window of available recreation time is getting smaller. If the same amount of time comes off by 2019 as came off in 2006, we'll have less than four hours a day each to do with whatever we want. And we would right now be spending three quarters of that time on average, three quarters of that time on average, watching the box. Now, my wife reckons I'm a bit preachy. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not. I love TV. I love it. There are dozens of shows and dozens of um, series that I think I watch them. I think that was written just for me. That is perfect entertainment and perfect television. And I love it. I love the comedy shows. I love the documentaries. I love sport. How else will I know what's going on on Centre Court and at Wimbledon if not for TV? TV's a magical thing. I love it. I'll watch, if, if Richmond's playing on the, uh, the TV, I'll watch that. And if we win, I'll watch the same game again. <laughs> My favourite show of all time is Survivor. I'm not judging anybody. I watch about an hour a week, though, right now. And right now, I'm giving that hour to Gordon Ramsay. All of it. <laughs> have, you, have you heard of this bloke? He swears his head off. He's a chef. He's fantastic. Get into him. So I'm not here to judge you or judge anyone who watches TV. I watch my share, but I choose my share. 60 years after we, well, after we first laid eyes on television, we choose to do that over anything else, anything else we can think of. But I don't even think that's true. I don't think we think about TV in that way. I think we think about TV... And I don't think we think about TV and usage at all. I think it's just reflexive. I think we just automatically do it. That's what it was for me. Before, I would just automatically go to the TV. I'd turn it on. Have I got another slide? Probably got. Have I been pressing this? Sorry. Before, I would go to the TV. <laughs> That's the one I wanted. <laughs> I would go to the TV before, after, after work, I'd just have my dinner and I, it's time to relax and what do I do to relax? It's when it's time to relax I plonked in front of the TV. That's what I did. I just did it automatically. I was raised up that way, born in 1974, coming through the 80s, just 
watching the, the, you know, when, I just, I, just what I did. So I didn't do anything else other than one thing. I just chose what I wanted to watch before I sat down. That's the only trick I did. I didn't stop altogether. I just said, before I watch any TV, I'm going to damn well choose what it is and it better be good. And I got out the guide and I said, I'll watch that and I'll watch that and I'll watch that. And after a while, I watched a little bit less because ah, that one doesn't really interest me. Before I'd watch that and then I'd watch whatever came on after, right? But I didn't do that anymore. I chose what I watched before I sat down. That's all I did. Now, just doing that, I found time was just falling out of the sky. I, got, uh, I, smart, I started two small businesses. I did start that blog. I restored a combi van. I didn't even know anything about cars. I restored a combi van. Rebuilt the engine from stuff I read in a book. I got a volunteer job with the AFL working with Logan. <laughs> <laughs> I trained for a marathon and have completed three or four since then. I did all of the things that I was never ever getting to. Now, none of these things are heroic, and I'm no superhero by any stretch. These are just, and these things aren't even hard things, they're just alternative forms of relaxation to watching television. But I, I would never have done them. They were the things that were on my list of things to do for years and years, and I never ever got to them. And I changed nothing else in my, in my personal life other than dialed down the amount of TV I was watching, actually consciously doing it. Okay, so enough of that. You get the point, right? All I'm saying is, you might be in this rut. Now, I don't say you aren't, I don't judge you for watching TV, I don't judge, I don't care how much TV you watch, as long as you choose how much, well, actually, I don't care at all about what you'd want to do with your time. I'm just saying, <laughs> maybe you're not thinking about it, maybe for yourself, you're in the same rut that I was in and you don't know, you haven't thought about it. So, I want, it to, I want you to... Think about that with that's you. And if it's you, and if you think you'd like to make the same kind of change that I'm talking about, do this. Make a list of six things you'd like to do with two hours at your house without going outside. Six things. You don't have to do it now. Certainly, it's not a good time to do, do it now. Right at the top of that list, watch TV, okay? First item on your list is watch TV, and then another five things. It's okay. Put TV on the list. But I reckon you'll notice two things. Firstly, it might take you a little while to come up with another five things that you like to do at your house in the space of two hours without going outside. That's the first thing you might notice and be surprised at. Second thing is, once you've got your list of six, and you will eventually come up with six, there'll be two, three things on that list that you never, ever do. Of the top six things you can write down that you enjoy doing at your house, inside your house, There'll be stuff you don't. And I bet you never even thought about that. Oh, well, I don't, I'm not here to... Look, maybe you didn't ever think about that. So, take that list and stick it somewhere you'll see it. May I suggest near the television. <laughs> now, when your reflex kicks in, like, I, my, like mine did, it's in view. And it's no longer... Your, reflect, your reflex now has a menu of items to choose from. I can do that, or that, or that. I don't have to just... Watch the TV reflexively. My relax reflex has a choice. That's all, okay? So I'll let you go now. I know you're busy, but thank you, <laughs> and I'll see you later.